Manial memorization methods in class can be tedious and tiring. Oftentimes, we end up contributing information to short-term memory and then promptly forgetting it after a test or some other form of assessment. What if there were a better way of memorizing that that instead focused on forging connections between the material and how it's used? Well, today, I, a student, will be teaching two French classes to find out how such a method would work. This is The Flip School. Madame Seals, my current AP French teacher, was kind enough to allow me this great opportunity to not just talk about education, but to experience the teaching process firsthand. So I thought about what exactly I wanted to do, what I wanted to teach. I personally have always had trouble with conjugations and tenses, and I'm sure many can agree with me that it's hard to remember how each verb you might want to use at any given time is conjugated, how the endings and stems to each tense work, and which tense corresponds with which in English. Most online sources will separate these into different parts. There will be a specific page telling you how each tense works, and then there will be a separate page for each verb that has all the conjugations. Those sources work well, but it's hard to search up all of that when you're talking to someone face to face. Ideally, you would commit all of that to long-term memory and then use it in daily life, which reinforces it. However, there needs to be a connection, a bridge between learning how the tenses function in a classroom to being able to think of them and use them with ease. Well, let's think about how we would talk in conversation. To say something like, I will go to the supermarket, you first need to know the subject right here. Is this I, you, we, they? Second in line, we need to know the tense. In this case, the will right after the I indicates that this is in future tense. And finally, we know the verb. And we have to be able to conjugate it according to the previous two things. So I've created a chart that helps you navigate through this easily. Now, there are six different sheets to this because you would have to have a different sheet for each French subject pronoun. And so we first have to choose which one to use with the sentence. Since the subject is I, we're going to use the sheet for I, which is the je in French. Now, I know six sheets might seem like a lot, but technically you could just use the one for je and then modify each ending to fit the other subject pronouns since you already have a good understanding of how the tense works if you're going to use it. Now, if you'll notice along the top here, I've written out the different tenses in English and what tense they would translate to in French. So now that we've chosen the sheet for je correctly, we now know that it's in future tense. And we know that because we've used the word will in our sentence over here. So I'm going to go across and find that exactly, the one for I will. Now, I've also listed these on the back. And there, right there, there's the column for I will. And this is the futur simple. Now we just have to go down this list of verbs, which are some of the most commonly used verbs in French. And we can go down the list and we can find the word for go, which is aller. And voila, if we go back here, we can see that, yes, you would therefore say j'irai au supermarché. Now, this has many perks, but I ultimately don't know how well it will work when we put it to the test. Bonjour, madame. Bonjour. Um, so I'm going to be teaching your French 3 and 3 honors classes today. Um, thank you, by the way, for allowing me to do so. Um, so how would you describe those two classes, and like, what approaches in, have you done so far in your teaching? Right, so level 3 in French is one of the most difficult years, I would say, definitely to teach. So by now, students have a foundation in the French language. Yet, they're not advanced enough to really start to be able to use it. So in level three and three honors, um, it's a heavy year of structures, just kind of the final year before you start really applying and practicing the language. So um, I would say for this class, one thing that I've really tried this year is to somehow start integrating um, all of the structures that they've been learning into a way that they're actually able to have conversation and use the language. 
Um, for instance, we were learning the conditional tense, which is something that you would do. So instead of just learning how to simply conjugate the verbs, we've been talking about how to incorporate it with different um, scenarios, like what would you do if you won the lottery? Or if you could change anything about the school, what would you do? And so kind of using the structures that we've been learning in this class to create meaningful conversation um, and also like ways to have fun amidst all of the heavy grammar topics has been kind of my goals for those classes this year. Okay, so it's kind of like a bridge between, you know, the, when you first start out and you learn like, all the basics and all the fundamentals and then you start to actually transition into, you know, using the language ideally in your daily life. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, I have this cheat sheet that I've made um, with all the tenses for French verbs. Um, I want to know, um, and I know you've looked at it so far, um, before we get started, how well do you think it will work? Uh, and are there any limitations you might have, or what's your overall take on its, you know, its impact? So I think it'll be very useful for the students because at level three, um, they should be functioning in around six different verb tenses at this point. And so I think for them just in their head to be able to have them categorize, and I love like the color, I think that will help them a lot. Um, it's going to be good for them as far as like, okay, what am I trying to communicate and how will I communicate that by using the verb tense sheets. I think the limitation will be is that it's going to be easy to visualize it, but it's creating meaning from the sheet, right? So like in what context would I use conditional, right? In what context would I use a uh, future approach or present? Um, and so just kind of going back to those rules of like, this is my conjugation, but when do I apply it? And then how would I do that? It's going to be kind of a limitation that just having the verb conjugated you won't have. Yeah. So, I think that even if it doesn't work as well, or in the way that I necessarily plan, I think it will ultimately be like a good exercise that needs to go through to create some of this. Yeah, I think they'll definitely use it, and I'm excited to see like the majority of the students. I think it will be one of the papers that they actually keep up with throughout the year, so I think it'll be good. Now, having students create something like this is great and all, but there needs to be an application aspect to further reinforce the concept, and so it's not just an exercise. Usually, the best way to practice something like verb tenses, or anything in another language for that matter, is to practice speaking and using the language more often. Now, I'm assuming that a French 3 class isn't quite ready to speak in fluent conversation, so I've created a game that we're going to play after we create the verb sheet. So how often do you have your students practice using French, uh, whether that be through like, speaking activities or through playing games or uh, whatever? I would say the goal is to practice two or three times a week, which seems like a lot if I only have my students for 50 minutes. Um, but I find that those are the most engaging activities that I could do in class. And so um, this year I started 10 minute defi, so 10 minute challenges. Um, so for my advanced classes, I, I will put 10 minutes on the board, give them a topic, and they have to create a different skit or something using um, the language. And I found that the students are able to rely less on writing out a dialogue and rely more on just speaking and communicating, um, which has been my goal all along, that they would be able just to generate a conversation without necessarily having to write everything down. All right, so they've already had a bit of experience. Yes, yes they have. Um, definitely the honors classes will be a bit more um, able to kind of take a scenario and respond to it, um, but definitely on level classes, although they'll need more time, they'll still be able to do I'll explain more about the game later, but first, let's see how the teaching process went with the first half, creating the verb sheet. Okay, Robert, c'est à toi. Well, it's been a while since I've been in uh, French 3, so I don't exactly remember how much French I knew back then. Um, I guess I'll try to speak like half in French and half in English. We are going to be creating uh, this French verb cheat sheet uh, that I uh, created. So, the kind of the premise behind this is that, um, you know, even being having been French since like middle school and I'm maybe French now, I always find it I always find it difficult to get the conjugations. This, you know, I assume 
At least a lot of you have, have trouble with that, or at least just you know um, using different tenses when you speak uh, French. Uh, so that's something that will go on. It's a bit easier. Um, but when we are actually speaking and we, we say something like "I will go to the supermarket," what's the first thing that we need to know about uh, everything if we're going to conjugate this verb. What's the first thing we need to know as just we're going through the sentence uh, from the beginning to end? Yeah. Subject. Yes, subject. In this case, it's I. So you need to know who you're talking about or who you're talking to. You know, is are you talking to you or are you talking about he or are you talking about she or are you talking about uh, we or they? Now, just a few side notes here. With the way the two classes were scheduled, I would be teaching the larger French 3 class first, and then the French 3 honors class second, which had about six students less that day. Now, I have thought a lot about what I was going to say and how I was going to present the information, but I wasn't prepared for some of the more, I guess, organizational things. With the first class, for example, I forgot to tell the students to pick up markers for the activity before the bell rang, which probably would have saved a bit of time. Madame ended up starting off the first class and getting everyone settled, so I didn't actually end up having to discipline anyone or tell the class to settle down, which admittedly, I'm a bit thankful for, but also, I kind of wanted to see how I would be able to deal with something like that. Regardless, I probably wouldn't have had to do much discipline because both classes were extremely well behaved throughout. So, you're gonna go ahead and put, uh, let's say, seven columns on there. Um, technically you only need six, but I have an extra column over here for the, um, I just put the English translation of the verb. Um, I think that'd be kind of helpful. On mine, I have it in the margin over here, so you could really divide it to six if you like. Um, it, it's really up to you. You have free range. Qui sont les qui utilisent dans le lycée ici? Which two? Lanier and Alair. With the actual process of creating the sheet, I ended up learning quite a few things as I went along. First off, and probably most importantly, I didn't manage my time that well the first time around, which probably ended up making them a bit bored from how long I ended up spending on it. And it's always a learning process, right? So for the second class, you did a really great job of kind of adjusting and also making the note-taking portion a little bit more interactive, which I found was very beneficial for the students. Um, so generally, like the max amount of time in a 53 minute class that you would have to actually teach is maybe 15 minutes, oftentimes. That would be the amount of time that you could get as far as a lecture style would go, or having them copy notes, and the rest of the time either um, what works well is like taking a break and like either showing a video or doing a quick like activity and then revisiting something if it's a bit more like content. So um, yeah, I think that was definitely kind of my takeaways as well from your experience. While the students were copying the different sections of my chart down, Madame suggested that I call on students periodically to see if they knew what the passé composé of avoir was, for example. I learned that even things like that help keep students more engaged throughout. From a student's perspective, it can be kind of annoying when a teacher randomly calls on you and you didn't want to answer or you didn't know the answer, but I guess it's kind of also my fault for overlooking the simple aspect that the energy in the classroom is going to be kind of low when students are copying stuff off the board. What is the passé composé of savoir? Uh, you watch know That's usual. <laughs> oh, what? What's the passé composé of savoir? Um, Oui. Oui. Oh, it's okay if you don't know some of these. I totally don't know the passé composé of savoir, but what I mean is. What is the imparfait of prendre? Um, Est-ce qu'il y a quelqu'un qui veut répondre? Oui, je ne comprends pas. Can 
not quite. Yeah. Kane. Kane. We. How many ends are there? Kind of approaching the verb chart was a little less overwhelming for sixth period than it was for fifth, um, just because they're more familiar with it and they're more confident in saying, okay, I understand present and past and all the different tenses. And so, um, whereas in the first class, they probably need a little bit more time, a little bit more guidance in order to reach um, that level of like engagement and confidence in what they're doing. I also wonder if maybe the class size or something or else maybe uh, contributed to how long the whole first part took with the Korean verb sheet. Uh, because I I felt like, you know, even though it was taking a while, like as I was going through, I was making sure that it, I was going at a pace that they were comfortable with. Sure. So. Welcome to public school education where budget talks and class sizes are completely. Um, yeah, it changes, right? And so you can see um, there was a difference. Obviously, um, some of them were out for the day, but on a normal average day, there's a difference of about um, 17 students in that class. And when you're considering a world language class where you're expected to speak and like, you know, keep it very engaging and interactive, the class size definitely has an impact. There's a lot less time that we can spend in collaboration and working with each other. Um, just because of the practicality and there's no space, right? Like, there's no space at all in the class. So getting up and moving around, like that's really hard to do when your closets are closing and filing cabinets come in the class and just desk and space. Um, those are kind of like the logistics of teaching there. Overall, it went fairly well, and I definitely was able to apply what I learned from my experience the first time to make the second class run a bit more smoothly. Um, I thought it was, I thought you did a great job. Um, I was thinking the other day, so people relate better to a teacher when they know a little bit about you. And so I should have told you, but just like to introduce yourself more of that you're in AP French, but like they would have loved to found out that you're going to Columbia and just like, you know, like a little bit more about your YouTube channel and just a little bit so that they can feel like, oh, okay, I can connect with him on some way. And so I think um, that would have been really cool for them to know. And now it's time for the game. Welcome to Créer une histoire. That roughly translates to create a story. I was totally going to come up with a really creative name for it, but I couldn't for some reason. The rules are simple. The class is split into six teams, each of which have to come up with a story in response to the prompts I have prepared beforehand. Students will have to use their new verb sheet to apply the specified tenses in about two minutes, and Madame gets to decide who wins each round. I, I thought it'd be more fun if she got to be the judge. Ready? Trois, deux, un, commence! The classes were definitely very engaged throughout the activity and really put in effort to come up with the most creative answers. <laughs> Some of the groups had a bit of difficulty at first, but I felt that as they did more, they got better at it. Also, another improvement that was made the second time around was that Madame was able to give each team a whiteboard to write on to make it a bit easier for them. So I think that engagement comes from confidence oftentimes. So I, you could probably really see the difference in confidence in the stories from sixth period versus fifth period. And so I think a lot of their engagement came from the fact that they were a lot more confident and like, okay, these are the verbs and this is what I have to communicate in this story. Um, and so, yeah, but as far as teaching goes, I think it was awesome. They were very receptive. They loved the activity. Um, they were even talking about it at the end of the day. And, and I think those are the things that really like makes teaching stand out because you're creating those type of memories and letting them be creative as well in the process. A lot of times, we think we can master a skill or perform well in a given instance, but when actually confronted with it in real life, 
things might not go as you would expect. Part of why I'm doing this whole teaching thing is because after numerous conversations with teachers, a lot of them have said that if I'm going to study and talk about education, I should also take some time to actually teach classes. Obviously, I don't expect a one-off activity to tell me everything there is to know about the profession, but it has given me valuable insight that I would never have understood if I didn't take the opportunity. So, thank you again, madam, for allowing me to teach two of your classes, and to you, the viewers, well, thanks for watching.